Right, this question simply wants us to differentiate. Um, so the first thing we need to do is to rewrite the function in a form which we can immediately differentiate. So 8x cubed, that's fine, keep that the same, but we'll replace 4 root x with 4x to the power of half. And we can't deal with this fraction, so we split it up into two fractions as the first step. So 3x squared over x plus 2 over x. And what we'll now do is then tidy up the bits and pieces that we've got so it's written as uh, powers of x. So those two bits stay the same. And these last two fractions, well, 3x squared over x, one of the x's cancels, so that's just x, uh, 3x. And I can write that as 2x to the minus 1. Um, and now this is in a form that I can differentiate using the standard rules of differentiation. So uh, dy by dx is going to be, uh, well, we've got 8 lots of 3x squared, because you bring the power down and reduce the power from 3 to 2 minus 4 lots of a half x to the power minus a half again to bring the power down and decrease the power by 1. 3x just in di differentiates to 3 and 2x to the minus 1 is 2 lots of minus x to the power minus 2. Okay, so you're multiplying by the power and decreasing the power by 1. Don't bother trying to do all of that uh, simplifying in one go, just do it like I've done it and write the next step with the simplifications. So 8 times 3 is 24, minus 4 times a half is minus 2, um, plus 3 doesn't change, and then we simply write minus 2x to the minus 2. And there's no need for any further simplification, our answer is perfect as it is. Right, we've been given curve C which has this equation, and we're asked to find the turning points. And we know that these occur when the first derivative dy by dx equals 0. So let's differentiate. So uh, dy by dx is going to be uh, 2 lots of 3x squared. So multiply by the power and reduce the power by 1. Take away 3 lots of 2x. Take away 12. And we'll just tidy that up to get 6x squared. Take away 6x. Take away 12. So that's dy by dx, and so I want to put uh, that whole thing equal to zero. That's the condition for my stationary point. And that gives me a nice little quadratic. It's even nicer once we divide by six, because the terms become very simple. x squared minus x minus two equals zero, and you should be able to factorize that fairly easily to get x minus two, x plus one equals zero. So this gives me the x coordinates of my turning points, either two or minus one. Uh, but what I have to do now is find the corresponding y values. So I'm going to take these x values and I'm going to substitute them in here, in my original equation. So let's take x equals 2, first of all. When x equals 2, y is equal to 2 lots of x cubed, which is 2 cubed. Take away 3 lots of 2 squared, minus 12 lots of 2, minus 7. And right, let's work that out. So 2 lots of 8 is 16. Take away 3 lots of 4, which is 12. Take away 12 lots of 2, which is 24. And take away 7. And that gives me minus 27. That's the y value. Um, let's look at our other turning point. When x equals minus 1, y is equal to 2 lots of minus 1 cubed. Take away 3 lots of minus 1 squared. Take away 12 lots of minus 1. Take away 7. So 2 lots of minus 1, which is minus 2 take away 3 lots of 1. So just take away 3, and then minus 12 lots of minus 1. So that just means add 12. And including the minus 7, we can see that that comes to 0. Um, technically, you don't necessarily have to put these up in pairs, but it's nicer to do so. So these are my coordinates of my turning points, 2, minus 27, and minus 1, 0. Right, part B, um, I'm asked to find the second derivative, d2y by dx squared. So I'm going to have to look at this expression here for dy by dx and differentiate that. So 6x squared is going to become 6 lots of 2x, and the minus 6x differentiates to minus 6. So that tidies up just to become 12x minus 6, and that is my answer to B. Now for part C, um, we're asked to use this to determine the nature of our stationary points. Okay, so we're going to have to evaluate this expression for our two x values. 
So looking at the first stationary point, when x is equal to 2, um, substitute that into 12x minus 6 for d dty by dx squared, and we get uh, 12 lots of 2, take away 6, which is 18. The important thing about that is that it is positive, greater than 0. And if the second derivative is positive, that means that the point that we're talking about is a local minimum. So that point 2 minus 27 is a minimum point. And we'll apply exactly the same process for the other point. So when x is equal to minus 1, d2y by dx squared becomes 12 lots of minus 1. Take away 6, which is minus 18. And of course, that's negative. So when the second derivative is negative, we can say that the point that we're discussing is a local maximum. So minus 1 naught is a maximum. That's it. Right, in this C2 question, we're given the formula for V, the volume of a box, which depends on its height, x. And the first thing we're asked for is dV by dx. So we've got to expand the brackets first. So let's go ahead and do that. If we expand out the 5 minus x squared first, we're going to start with 5 squared. Then we would have 2 lots of minus 5x, which is, of course, minus 10x. And lastly, we'd have minus x squared which gives me x squared. And if I just expand that bracket now, 4x times 25 is 100x, 4x times minus 10x is minus 40x, and 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. So that's v, which means I can now get on and differentiate it. So dv by dx, uh, 100x just gives me 100. Minus 40x squared is going to be minus 40, lots of 2x. And then finally, 4 lots of 3x squared which we can tidy all up. Um, I'll reverse the order, so we've got the highest powers of x first. 12x squared minus 80x plus 100. So that's dv by dx. Now for part b, it asks me to work out the maximum value of the volume, and that corresponds to when dv by dx equals 0. So that expression that I've just written down, I can put equals 0. So I have a quadratic to solve now. I'll make it a little bit nicer by dividing all the terms by 4. So we get this, and this is a quadratic you should be able to factorize fairly easily, not necessarily quickly. There's different ways to do it, but my method relies on looking at the first and last coefficients, so a and c. And if we multiply those together, we get 75. And we compare that with the middle coefficient, b, which is minus 20. And if I look at those two numbers, 75 and minus 20, what I want is two numbers which multiply to give 75 and add to give minus 20. Well, it turns out that those are minus 15 and minus 5. So what do I do with those? I stick them back in my working. I replace the minus 20x with minus 15x and minus 5x. And, of course, I've still got the plus 25 on the end, and it's still equal to 0. Now all I need to do is factorise adjacent pairs of terms. So these two terms here have a factor of 3x in common. So if I take out the 3x, I get 3x brackets x minus 5. And for the next two, I want to get the same bracket. I want to get x minus 5. So I see that I can take out minus 5 from both of these. And then that will leave me the bracket that I want, x minus 5. You can check by uh, multiplying that out in your head. And again, that is still equal to 0. Um, and so x minus 5 is one of my factors. The other factor comes from these two bits here, 3x and minus 5. So that bracket is 3x minus 5. These are my two factors. Um, either of them must be equal to 0, so either x is equal to 5, or from the second bracket, x is equal to 5 thirds. Now I want the value of x that corresponds to this maximum, not... Um, two values, um, but if I look up at the top here, I'm told that x is between 0 and 5, and specifically, it's less than 5. And uh, however you look at it, 5 is not less than 5. So the only option is that x is equal to 5 thirds. So that's the x value for my maximum volume, but I'm not done because that isn't the volume. I want to know what the maximum volume is. So I'm going to have to take that x value and uh, substitute it into our original formula. So take x equals 5 thirds, put that into v equals 4x times 5 minus x squared. So substitute that in, 
the maximum volume is 4 lots of 5 thirds multiplied by 5 minus 5 thirds in brackets all squared. So tidy that up. The first bit, 4 lots of 5 thirds is 20 thirds. The bracket, 5 is 15 thirds. So 5 minus 5 thirds is 10 thirds. And mustn't forget to square that. So what I end up with is 20 thirds multiplied by 100 ninths. And it's simple, therefore, to work out that the volume is 2,000 over 27. And the units are, of course, centimetres squared. Part C, I need to justify using calculus that this is a maximum. So we're going to have to use the second derivative, d2v by dx squared. So I'll take my expression for dv by dx, which is off screen at the moment, but you've probably got it written down. Um, so we have uh, 12x squared, which becomes 12 lots of 2x, and minus 80x becomes minus 80. And when you tidy it up, the second derivative is 24x minus 80. What I'm really interested in is what value this has at my stationary point, at my turning point. So I substitute x equals 5 thirds into there. 24 lots of 5 thirds minus 80. Uh, 24 lots of 5 thirds, that's 8 lots of 5, which is 40. Take away 80, we get minus 40 for the second derivative. Now it could be minus anything, we don't care minus what, but the point is that it's negative. And if the second derivative is negative, then we know that we're dealing with a local maximum point. And so we've shown what we were required using calculus. Right, we have the equation for this curve, which we can recognize as a cubic, and we want to do the sketch. So let's get stuck in. Any graph crosses the x-axis when y equals naught. So looking at the equation, it'll be equal to naught when that bracket is zero, so x is minus one, or when that bracket is zero, x is minus three. And note that because of the squared on that bracket, minus three is a repeated root. And that means in the context of a sketch that doesn't cross the axis there, it just touches it. Now it'll cross the y-axis when x equals zero. Okay, so if you substitute x equals zero into the equation, you get zero plus one times zero plus three squared. So one times nine, which is nine. Um, we also need to know what the general shape is. And if you look at the equation again, you've got a positive x term in each bit. So you're going to get a positive x cubed term, which means that your graph is that way up. So we can go ahead and sketch it. And we know where it crosses or meets the axes. Um, it's going to meet cross at minus 1. And it will also meet the x-axis at x equals minus 3. So if we put those on there and just have a go at drawing the sketch in, it's going to come up from the bottom left, curve around, just touching the axis there but not crossing, then cross at minus 1. And it crosses the y-axis we worked out at 9. So as long as you label all those points, uh, we've done our job. Right, part B, we want to find dy over dx. So um, y has brackets, let's expand them first so that we can differentiate. So if I expand the squared bracket first, I'm going to get x squared plus uh, two lots of 3x, so 6x altogether, and plus 3 squared, uh, which is of course 9. And I'm just going to expand this next pair of brackets really carefully to make sure we don't miss anything out. So x times x squared is x cubed. x times 6x is 6x squared. x times the 9 gives me 9x. And then I've got to multiply the 1 by everything. So 1 times x squared gives me simply x squared. And I'm going to line it up in columns here. 1 times 6x is 6x. 1 times 9 is 9. And note that laying it out like this means it's really easy for me to add up the different um, powers of x um, and get this expression for y. So now I have a simple polynomial and I can differentiate. So 3x squared plus 7 lots of 2x plus 15. Don't miss out any working because it's a show that question. But if we simplify that we get 3x squared plus 14x plus 15 which is exactly what we wanted. Okay, now part C, we're given some more information. There's a point which lies on C as x coordinate of minus five. We want the equation of the tangent there. So like the equation of any line, we need the gradient, 
the gradient of the tangent in this case, and the coordinates of the point. So we need to find the y value for point A. So to get the gradient of the tangent, we use this expression for dy by dx, and we substitute in the x value minus 5. So that's going to give us uh, 3 lots of minus 5 squared, plus 14 lots of minus 5, plus 15, which is obviously 3 times 25, uh, minus 70, plus 15, and when you sort that all out, that ends up equaling 20. So the gradient is 20, halfway there. And now I need to find the y value for a. So I simply substitute the x value, minus 5, into my original equation for y, which is x plus 1 brackets x plus 3 squared. So in this case, y is equal to well, minus 5 plus 1 in brackets times minus 5 plus 3 squared. And if we work that out, well, it's minus 4 times uh, minus 2 squared, so minus 4 times 4, which is minus 16. Um, so that's my y value. I've got all the information I need. So we'll use uh, the, the sort of formula y minus y1 is m times x minus x1. Uh, my y1 is this value that I've just worked out. My m, my gradient, is 20, and x minus the x value that I know, which is minus 5. And uh, let's sort that out, so we get y plus 16, multiply out the brackets, 20x uh, plus 100, and we simply need to subtract 16, because we want it in the form y equals mx plus c, so subtract 16, we're left with y equals 20x plus 84. Okay, part D, we've got another bit of information. B also lies on the curve, and the tangent there is parallel to the tangent at C. So this tells me that the gradient uh, of the curve at B is the same. So dy by dx at B is also 20. So we need to solve the equation dy by dx equals 20. Um, now, we know that when we do this, one of the solutions that we will get is x equals minus 5, because we already know that the gradient at point A, when x is minus 5, is 20. So this is going to help us. Um, but if we do that, dy by dx equals 20, so let's just use the formula that we've got. 3x squared plus 14x plus 15 equals 20. Um, subtract the 20 to make it a standard quadratic. Um, and now we're going to use this fact that one of the solutions is minus 5. This makes factorizing this an absolute doddle, if you remember, because if the solution is minus 5, then the factor is going to be x plus 5. And so that bit there must be 3x. And to get the minus 5, when you expand it, we must have a minus 1 here. So really, it might otherwise take a while to factorize, but if we remember that we know one of the solutions already, it's dead easy. And the only other solution, x equals 1 third, and that must be the x coordinate of point B. And there we have it.